Hey folks, we're talking Scarlet and Violet, we're talking new Pokemon, we're talking the ways in which Pokemon evolved today, because I've got a bone to pick, let me, let me, let me tell you here, because I always liked that Pokemon evolve and change, and some ways are more complicated than other ways, but recently, Pokemon has been getting, in my opinion, a little bit off the rails when it comes to the whole minutia of how to get the little baby bunny rabbit to turn into the giant space guardian and take it on the master quest with a hundred different objects. It's getting a little ridiculous for me. They have some weird evolution methods, and they've always had some that are weird, weirder, like items and learning certain moves, but they've really, really reached a fever pitch lately. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to dive into those and we are going to and analyze each and every one of them. And I definitely don't think that they're bad. I want to get that out of the way. But a lot of these are how would I even figure that out without a guy? How would I figure that out without internet access or just in normal gameplay? That's the problem here. They're getting convoluted to the point of me taking random guesses and pleas at getting Pokemon to evolve. So maybe in some way think of this as a guide, because we're going to go over how they all evolve, but more importantly a review and grade of these Pokemon with fantastical evolution methods. So we're just going to go down the list, each one. I've picked out all the ones that evolve in absolutely freakish ways, I'm sure you'll agree with me, and give them all a grade based on three criteria that I've picked out. One, are the Pokemon cool you know is what they're evolving to cool is what they evolve from cool is is it good not just cool but is it cute is it awesome is it funny is it bodacious in some way i don't know but is it awesome is it good at the end of the day are these actually good pokemon number two could i figure this out on my own i am not very bright that is probably clear based on the complaining and raging in most of my videos. Do we think that a normal person, or a child even better, the intended audience, could figure this out without getting help or extreme lengths? And how long would that take at that point? Number three, does this process make logical sense? I think this one will make more sense contextually, but does this Pokemon performing this action Re logically and sensically result in this change in its body. Like, I don't know, if I went to the, the gym a bunch and then I got stronger, that would be a sensical evolution for that process. But is that true for these Pokemon? I'm not so sure. So let's get into it. Okay, so most of these Pokemon are from the newer gens, generally Gen 6 and above. A couple of them are before that. Some exclusions that I would like to make at first is if a Pokemon evolves by friendship, it is not on this list. Pokemon evolves using an item, it is not on this list. If the Pokemon is evolved by trading or trading while holding an item, also not on the list. And finally, if it is a Pokemon that evolves from learning a move, it is not on this list. And that is because they are usually moves that they learn on level up, barring a few exceptions from, from older gens. I'm looking at you, Ancient Power. That's not super cool, but it's all right. It's all right. I'm willing to live with the Ancient Power mods. Okay, so just going from the top, I have them in order of their Pokedex family, Annihilate. This one, I think is pretty good. This one is 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 relatively on the on the high side. I like Annihilate. It's a cool idea. It's a logical progression from Primeape that has the data about it saying that if these little chains on its arms got taken off, it would fly into this endless and deadly rage. And that is totally carried by Annihilate, which also clearly has a little wrist bracelet broken and it turns into a ghost. So there's some strong implications there about Annihilate. To evolve Primeape into Annihilate in Scarlet and Violet, it is a Gen 9 Pokemon to use the move Rage Fist 20 times, which it learns in this game and is a ghost type attack that is just generally pretty good. I'm leveling up Annihilate. I'm probably taking the move. I'm probably using it. And then eventually I'm getting it. I'm probably not knowing that it took exactly 20 times or that's what I'm gunning for on the first roll, but it is going to happen. So I'm going to give this one a big old thumbs up. Annihilate is great. Primeape is great. This would probably happen. And the process makes sense. This one's good. All right, number two. This is probably my least favorite favorite on this list is Glorian Farfetch'd and Surfetch'd. This one, this one made me rage when I was playing Sword and Shield. To evolve this Farfetch'd 
into Surfest. You have to get three critical hits, three, in the same battle. It doesn't have to be on the same Pokemon, but in the same battle. I like Surfetched a lot. I hunted very hard for to get a shiny Surfetched when I was playing Sword all, the, all the, the darn day. Without a guide, I would have not figured this out because it was also hard. Now, I will say, shooting for this at the end game, you know, like, I guess maybe a little bit of red light syndrome on it like i was so aware that i wasn't getting the crits on leaf blade that i was frustrated but if i had been using galarian farfetch maybe the entire game maybe i could have gotten those crits but once i ran out of like passable battle partners to go up against this one was pretty tough it was infuriating because you're you're grinding for a chance three times in a row the process does make a lot of sense though I think that it makes a ton of sense even that Farfetch with this giant, giant leak is uh, after landing some really, really good shots and, you know, really honing its blade in battle. It eventually, like, breaks down into a sword and shield instead of just a giant mace or whacker i don't know but it's 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 a big stick okay it's it's a big stick they even showed this process really really cool in the anime that was one of my favorite episodes of journey so i'm gonna say the pokemon is cool the process makes a lot of sense i did not figure this one out on my own and i think you would be hard pressed to figure this out on your own without actually doing it but it would probably happen eventually so this one let's see i gave Primeape, a big old thumbs up. I'm gonna say this one gets a B. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're in school. We're at Scarlet and Violet. We're going to school. Farfetch'd, you get a B. Pretty good. This could have been better. I'm, I'm certain of it. All right, next we have the Quillfish line, one of the Arceus evolutions, and these ones, I think, are the worst. I have no idea what they were thinking here and at all. You you be the judge of that, I guess, but I think they were ridiculous, and you, you know I was looking up a guide and being like, what? How am I supposed to do this? But to get Quillfish to evolve into Overquill in Legends Arceus, which is currently the only place where it's available, I'm sure they're adding all the Arceus Pokemon into Scarlet and Violet through home once that's available. But special move, Bar Barrage, 20 times in Strong Style. See, I'm frustrated by this because that will happen eventually, probably. If I'm actually using Quillfish, that probably will happen eventually. But that is if... Quillfish is one of my main team members, and I think that's the big deal breaker here, kind of like with Farfetch, where it's like, unless I'm actually using Quillfish as one of my main teammates, probably never figuring this out on my own. With a guide, probably gonna work, probably gonna do it eventually. I mean, obviously, it's you've got a guide, so it's gonna happen eventually. And I think that the benefit here is that the odd person who picks Quillfish to go on their main team, they can tell the people who didn't when they're trying to clear their Pokédex. If they even know is the thing. If they know that that was the criteria, because this is also kind of like so secret where maybe you think that you got it on a level up. Maybe you think that you satisfied some other condition. So the coincidence of this one also kind of rubs me the wrong way. Pokémon are fine. I like Quillfish enough. Overquill, yeah, you get a you get a passing score. Does the process make sense? I mean, I guess essentially, like I get that Quillfish went to the gym and its spikes got bigger. Like, ooh, good job, Quillfish. So at the end of the day, Quillfish gets a C. I'm thinking Quillfish gets a C because this would happen eventually if I use Quillfish. But there's a lot of coincidence involved, and I, the average trainer, am probably heading to Bulbapedia. Let's be honest, and I don't love doing that when I'm just playing the game for the first time. So. C for Quillfish. Middle of the road, passing grade. Also from Arceus, we got Wordier, the Stantler line. This one's essentially the same thing. So I actually used Stantler on my main team in Arceus, and I did not get this to happen. I did not use Psy Shield Bash 20 times in, not in a row, 20 times in Agile style. That did not happen to me. I got my Stantler to, I want to say, between 40 and 50 before I figured I was doing something wrong. So this one is personal for me. It's very personal. Deeply frustrating. Deeply, deeply frustrating. And I'm going to say, honestly, I don't love the design on Wordier. I don't think they, hmm. Stantler's maybe a little bit hard to work with, you know, a little bit difficult in the studio, but I don't think that this Pokemon looks great. You, you can, you can judge maybe more accurately for yourself on that one but i don't love it it's okay 
it's just okay. And because of all this, and it's essentially being the same as Overquill, I guess the process like makes a tiny bit of sense. I don't know why using Psy Shield Bash is what makes its, I mean, I guess that would make its antler stronger, but why is it an agile style? Why is, why, why is, why is all the way this is? So I am asking questions. I'm not loving the Pokemon. I tried using it because I knew it had an evolution, but disappointments, disappointments, I'm going to say. So D plus, D plus on Stantler, a little bit stinkier than Quillfish. Go take a shower. Maybe Maybe we can talk them. So this is one of the ones that actually kind of surprised me thinking about it going back is the Hitmon line, you know, the Tyrogue evolves into the three different Pokemon. And this was in the games in Gen 2. And I'm kind of surprised that they put something like this in the game so early. And I think this one is a bit of a special case because your Pokemon is always going to evolve. And that's because the, the way that the Hitmons evolve is Tyrogue. Once it gets to that level of evolution, if it has its attack is higher than its defense, it picks one. If its defense is higher than its attack, it picks one. And then the last one, which was Gen 2, where Tyrogue was introduced to begin with, is if its attack is equal to its defense. And that one was rigorously difficult for me as a kid. I was like opening up the calculator, trying to be like, is this gonna raise me a point? Is this one gonna, is this gonna, is this gonna offset my balance? And I, I had a ton of difficulty with it, but the payoff was immense. And I'm very much appreciated being able to get him on top off of that. So I'm willing to appreciate that there. But this one is, I think, if you wanted one in particular, this one probably led to a lot of disappointment, especially if you're a big him on top fan. That's just tough. That's just tough, especially if you didn't know. So I'm going to say that this one is, hmm... Hmm, I'm on the fence about this one, really. I, I really am, because you're always getting the evolution. Definitely figure it out on your own, for sure. But if you're a big fan of one of them, it might lead to some frustration. The process does make sense, though. It makes a lot of sense, and these Pokemon are super cool for it, because Tyrogue is like a baby base fighter, you know, ready to move up in the world. And then each of its evolutions are reflective of that stat that it chose. Like, Hitmontop represents balance. Hitmonlee represents, like, brute force fighting style. And then Hitmonchance re represents that defensive stance that a, a boxer would take so the stat lineups they make sense they make the pokemon awesome process it's really really cool the pokemon are cool well i think i could figure this one out on my own it did lead to frustration for me when i didn't have a guide and i was trying to figure it out so this one is going to be a strong let's say a minus a minus b plus territory i think for a lot of these pokemon and i think this is a a trend across the games and when this occurs it's great but you kind of have to do a little bit of digging either way when there is an npc or an in-game guide that says somehow alleges that the evolution exists which in, in Scarlet and Violet, there's like soft ones uh, for like uh, the dolphin, for example, has an NPC that is like, huh, I wonder if we did this to evolve this Pokemon. That could work. That makes it much more acceptable when they do that. You don't have to be subtle about it. You can just whack me over the head with it because I'm running around with this Eevee at level 99 and I still don't know how it evolves to pick a example from my childhood. That, how was I supposed to know that Fire Red and Leaf Green didn't have an in-game clock? As, as a child, but that's that's neither here nor there. If they had an NPC for every one of these, I think I think life would be a lot nicer. It just, it's, life would be a lot nicer. This is another infamous one. I feel like is probably a little not match, matching well with the grading scale here, but is Feebas from Gen 3, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. I'm also very conflicted about this one. Feebas is disgustingly ugly. Like, Magikarp is like cute ugly. Feebas is disgustingly ugly. So immediate negative points for making me look at that to begin with. But the whole process, using the contest, Feebas evolves into Melodic by having max beauty stat. This was very complicated in Emerald and Ruby and Sapphire. For one, catching Feebas was very complicated uh, in where it had specific tiles that it could be fished on. That's already a problem. Then that final evolution, you get that like super cool golden god type Pokemon Melodic. It's pretty satisfying. It is pretty satisfying doing all that and getting Melodic, but did I ever get a Melodic? No, and I tried. I tried many different angles. I tried many different ways. I never got a Melodic. I got a Melodic later when they changed the way that the evolution was made. Good on them for changing how it evolved. The original implementation though, is what I am reviewing here. And that gets a giant stinking F. Melodic is cool. I suppose the process makes sense. A little ugly duckling thing going on here, way too hard. Way, way, way too hard. 
and I know, I know, I'm not owed a melodic or anything, but at least somebody could tell me. At least somebody could tell me that I don't deserve a melodic because it's it's so hard to do. Like, I don't say all this in lieu of challenge. I want to know what the challenge is. I think that we can at least be clear in our communication that, hey, listen, listen, terrible gamer, you're never getting your melodic, okay? This is why, because you have to do this, this, and this, and you're not good enough to do that. No, I was just sitting there wondering what I was doing wrong, so F. F for melodic. You stink. But they changed it, so yippee. All right, another fish. We're, we're in a little bit of a fishy mode right now is the basculine line. It's also got an evolution in Arceus. Great. That was definitely needed. Love that. Is the way that it evolves is that it needs to take 294 damage in recoil damage specifically. And it had a move that helped with this. I really like Basculine Legion. I think it's a really cool idea that like as it takes recoil damage and they like kind of thin the crowd like some of the basculin they die they die it, it's it's heavily implied that they die don't don't tell anybody though that's a pokemon secret like they thin the herd they thin the herd out and eventually you get this like ghost fish power thing which is like is it dead is it not but it's you know it's got like the 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 lost souls on its back you know helping it go of the waterfall so i like this pokemon a lot the process makes a lot of logical sense someone in the game really needed to tell me they really really needed to tell me because this one also got me real bad and i even after i looked at the guide goodness gracious because I, th I think it had some stipulation where it like couldn't faint or something before you were done doing the 294 damage which is fine just tell me that next time and we'll be we'll be in great shape so for cool pokemon good process frustrating implementation b plus b plus good job basculin good job almost almost perfect following basculin we have reunerigus which was a new sword and shield pokemon that evolves from galarian yamask the uh from gen 5 but is now a gen 8 form pretty cool this one really got me this one really really got me i think that if there is this concept worth talking about it is this pokemon in the wild area in sword and shield there was a specific stone archway if you took your yam mask under this archway while it hadn't taken at least 49 damage and it was not fainted before the 49 damage happened, it would evolve into Reunerigus. I don't know why this occurs. I don't know why they made it that way. Maybe there's some really exciting lore uh, going on there, but nothing is compelling me to get interested in that. I don't know why this specific stone archway does that. I don't particularly love the way that either of these Pokemon look. I did not figure this out on my own, and I also struggled doing it once I knew about it. I don't think I knew anybody. Nobody told me that, oh my gosh, I Reunerigus evolved in the overworld. I didn't even do anything. That's so weird this is one of those that they don't even have like the the defense to say that it could happen naturally and people could spread it i am confident in that this is such an obscure meaningless evolution method i think it is the poster child of pokemon evolving in freakish ways take your ghost to the stone archway this one specific stone archway in the wild area make sure it's taken 49 points of damage no fainting only then will it evolve into its next form. That's 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 nonsense. That's nonsense and ludicrous. And what the hell were they thinking? What the hell were they thinking? I like Yamask a tiny bit, but this one gets an F. This one gets it. This one. This one is inexcusable. I don't think the coolest Pokemon in the world could exclude could excuse this evolution method because it is so ridiculously convoluted. If there's an NPC, I didn't find it. Regardless, F. F for fail, you stink. Pancham, oh panda. I like this one actually a lot. The only issue I have with it is good luck figuring out that this is the way that it evolved. Pancham only evolves after you reach the level requirements if you have a dark type in your team. And this was an X and Y. So a lot of people were running around with Greninja and you know, that makes sense. But figuring out that was why it evolved, I wouldn't have known. I would have thought it's just, ah, yes, level 36 panda. It works. So, and the idea is good too. You know, this panda is a little bit of a mischief maker and then it gets some bad influence in the party and it goes really, really off the rails. And now it's, now it's just a, now it's a big mean panda who's been badly influenced. That's good. 
and pandas are good this is this is a good one i think maybe conveying this information without a guide would be a little complicated but ultimately this one will probably happen naturally i did not use a pan champ in my party but hopefully people could figure this out especially younger players in the end so this one is gonna get a b plus a minus for logic being good funny panda pokemon are pretty cool and then this one's probably going to happen, but I don't know if it would be super easy to figure out or convey because there's like some sort of, there's a bit of a random element there. Oh, oh, here's a, here's another wonderful one. And th this is one of our, well, I guess maybe the only auto F. This one is an auto F because just what the hell, what the hell. Inkay and Malamar on the 3DS. This is this is the actually the Pokemon that inspired this entire monologue, I guess. I'm I'm ranting and raging pretty hard right now, but Inkay evolves when you turn your 3DS upside down when you level it. Upside down 3DS because they needed a Pokemon that could highlight the gyroscope gimmick of the 3DS. Thank goodness. Pokemon hadn't highlighted the gyroscope in a meaningful way yet, and now now it can. This is a problem because there is no in-world explanation that can impart that information to me. There is no character in character that could say, hey you, no, not you, the player, you, the one playing the game, turn your 3DS upside down when you evolve your Inke. I would be gobsmacked if an NPC like that did exist. It does make sense. Inke and Malamar have very cool designs because of like an, being an upside down squid. The evolution method is inexcusable. Auto F. Malamar could be my favorite Pokemon. I'd say it's like top 30, maybe. It's up there. You know, there's a lot of Pokemon. Top 30 is a big deal. Don't don't get mad. It's inexcusable. Turn my 3DS upside down? Are you kidding me? To evolve a Pokemon? No, no. Take a shower, you stink. In the same vein, I think they did a much better job with this next one. Milkery and Alcremy. I love, I love these Pokemon. So I'm a bit biased for sure. I love Milkery and I love Alcremy. It's it's just wonderful. It's 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 a it's a nice nice Pokemon. It's it's a delight. It's, it's truly a delight, but you evolve this one by, you know, giving it the fruit of choice. They have these little, like, fruit candy charms. There's, there's a whole bunch of varieties of them, and Al Creamy can get all these different forms from it. It's actually, it's actually very, very cool that they did this. And you spin in place in the game, and that's, like, how you whip the cream. I think this one is probably less than intentional, but it did happen to me naturally because I was just fidgeting around in-game. And I think that the benefit is because these are items that are very obviously designated for a pokemon and they do they do a decent job with that on the flavor text where a certain pokemon loves this item it certainly helped that i was planning on fidgeting around in general i think this one is very likely that it could just happen to somebody because spinning like, like if you started spinning your stick in sword and shield you would start actually spinning like you would start twirling and when you finish twirling you would strike a pose really cool pose too you should try it it is a very mundane and common activity and milkery and alcremy i think are largely pretty popular they're no, they're no quillfish this one is a lot more acceptable than the turning your 3ds upside down behavior i still don't think that it's necessarily perfect you're gonna get the help on this one you're gonna get the help on this one and i like alcremy a lot and the whipping the cream by spinning around probably as good as it gets for that being logical so i'm gonna give this one an a yeah it gets an a El creamy is good you get an a for being awesome and for having a good method and now we are on to the pokemon that were actually introduced in scarlet and violet so what what did they bring to the table this time nonsense we have our pokemon that evolve by doing the a thousand steps in let's go I was told this one, and y'all know I've been playing this game recently, I was told this one, I didn't have to look it up in a guide, but I, I do wonder if the first person to figure it out and started telling people looked it up in a guide, like, did, did this did this branch root start at a guide or somebody figuring it out? Somebody really enjoying walking with their Pokemon. So the three Pokemon we have for this are Relorm, the one that looks like a little dung beetle, Pomo, Evolution of Palmy, it's like a little mouse puncher thing and then bramblin the tumbleweed pokemon i would have never guessed with palmo i would have never guessed in our 100 years that you have to walk it to get it to evolve nothing about palmo tells me that i need to take it on a walk that thing should be off the leash punching little pokemon not walking around with me however relorm and bramblin make a ton of sense and almost to the point of maybe actually getting it like this Pokemon has a really good walk animation. Relorm pushes its little ball of poop 
its poop. Rello pushes its little poop really, really smoothly and fluidly when you walk into the overworld. Ramblin rolls around like a little tumbleweed. It's pretty good. Thousand steps though, uninterrupted. Really now? A thousand steps. Oh, I know y'all watched my little let's go mode evolution video if you didn't go watch it right now. Those two Pokemon make a lot of sense. And I think they're good. And the evolutions, well, they make sense, but Bramble Gas is not good. When a Pokemon evolves into a bigger version of itself, that is not desired. That is not the goal. Little Tumbleweed turning into a Tumbleweed with a smiley emoji is not desired. The evolution made sense though. Whether or not it was easy to grasp, that is a different question. And no, it was not. Relorm, I think, is the pinnacle of this because the little beetle rolls its poop for a thousand steps, it evolves into a bigger beetle with a magic orb of poop and its journey has come to a conclusion and it's awesome. So that's the ranking there. It goes Rabska, Bramblegast, and then Pomet, what Pomo evolves into. And Pomet is also just a bigger Pomo. It's got like a beard and it knows how to use Revival Blessing. I still like it because it's cute, but no, no, not, 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 not helpful. So I'm going to give Rabska a B minus on this one because of how well it actually integrated the method. And then Bramblegast is going to get a D plus and Pomet, um, I don't want to give Pomet an F, but it gets like a D minus. It almost fails. It almost fails this course to just, just barely did not. Now, different method that gave me a lot of grief. I did this one on stream actually. Gimme Ghoul's evolution and Goldango, the the Goldfinger surfer, golden surfboard fanny pack guy made of gold. I suppose this one would happen eventually. The Gimme Ghoul coins don't have a stated purpose. Well, clearly the Gimme Ghoul likes coins, clearly, which is why this one I think is up in the air more so. Clearly Gimme Ghoul wants coins, but like, is it just nothing? I was under the impression it did not evolve at the first because they had that whole thing with Pokemon Go and I thought it was just, oh, it likes money and it has two different forms. It has a little minion form and it has a little chest form. This is fine. This is cool. It likes coins and that's okay. They collect 999 of the coins to get it to evolve. Again, this would probably happen eventually. It happened to someone and then they told me. So it has that going for it too. Golden Go is super cool though. I really, really like this evolution and I think it shows a lot of creativity and newness, but it still looks like a Pokemon. I really, really like it. Does it really make sense though? I don't really get it why Gimme Ghoul turns into a golden surfer, bro. I guess it makes sense why I need all the gold, but why are you doing that, Gimme Ghoul? What, what 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 do you think is important in life? Do you what what are your goals? What what are your desires? I'm, I'm besides greed, obviously greed, but when I'm greedy, I like eat ice cream and play an expensive fire emblem game. Not turn into a surfer of pure gold. Maybe Midas was involved or something. But this one overall, because I would say that the Pokemon logic is probably the least important part if it is going to happen eventually anyways. This one gets an A-. minus. Very, very good. Really, really, very, very good in the end. Probably takes a really, really long time. And who's rocking around with the little gimme ghoul anyway? It only gets two moves. That was actually a pretty major clue, honestly, but that's like a, like a meta clue because like Magikarp has Splash only and it's like oh that's that's the tell it's gonna evolve into something awesome so it just has two little moves and i was like pretty sure it evolves but the thing in the pokedex after it does not look like it at all i'm dogging on it too hard right now it gets an a minus it's good and it's on my team in the game so good job well then go all right so this one is not really that bad or i think really even weird this might be the most normal pokemon evolution ever but I fear that I will warrant warrant negativity if I don't include it is the new mouse hold Pokemon, Tandem Mouse and Mouse Hold. Maybe the most normal evolution method ever. If you get Tandem Mouse up to level 25 and just keep it in your party or even in your box, at some point randomly, it will have a child or two childs. There's no fanfare. There's no evolution screen. You know, they have a very private and intimate relationship and every Pokemon evolves to some extent. So they don't, they don't need to make a big deal about it. They just have their child and then move on. They're a mouse hold now instead of just a tandem mouse. I love this one. I think it makes a ton of sense. This one I would say gets an S as far as weird evolutions, just evolutions in general. In the mouse, mouse hold, you get an S. That's higher than A, by the 
the way. You get a super A, it's an S. Unlike the super F, you are receiving the best grade because they don't even give you a cutscene. They just do it. They just evolve. They don't even waste your time with the evolution cutscene. They just get into it. Suddenly I have four mice on my team instead of two. So I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, there's a new Pokemon in there. How'd that get in there? And it's just random. It is random after level 25. I think it's wonderful. Pokemon are awesome. They're very, very cute. It's a little family of mice. I absolutely could figure it out on my own because it just happens. You just catch it and get it up to the level and it happens. And the process makes sense. They're a little family of mice and they're expecting a newborn. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Mouse hold, you're in my heart. King Gambit, the new Bisharp evolution. This is, from this game, I think takes the cake of where the hell do I go? Type evolutions. I had no idea that Bisharp evolved into King Gambit until I fortunately saw it on the champion's team at the end of the game. You know, go figure. Same thing with Spiritomb in Gen 4. The first time I played it, I was like, what the hell is that? And it was an awesome moment. King Gambit looks pretty cool. I don't like the way that it moves around in game. It's so it's sitting on its own hair. It looks like it's taking a trip to the toilet and instead of walking, it scoots around on the chair. That one that one's tough. That that is a that is a that is a tough thing going on for it. That is extremely tough. Whew. Okay, thematically makes sense. Ponyard turns into Bisharp when it becomes a brave warrior. Chess theme going on. Bisharp commands Ponyards. And then when a Bisharp becomes particularly powerful, particularly good of a leader, it becomes a King Gambit and it leads the entire team. It's kind of a pyramid scheme in the way. Uh, the King Gambit has recruited several of Bisharp friends to go recruit several of their Ponyard friends to lead them into battle. The method that they chose for this, however, is that the, the Bisharp in question has to fight and knock out three Bisharp that have families of Ponyard following them. So I guess the, the intention here is that your Bisharp has defeated other leader Bisharp. Because if the Bisharp is a leader, it is holding a special item which indicates it as a leader. By defeating three of them, the connotation is that your Bisharp is like a, a leader among leaders. And then you become the king. And then the King Gambit sends the troops into battle. And it's wonderful. This was one of the last Pokemon I got on my deck. So I think it should go without saying. Because I'm not very smart to begin with and then it was complicated after i knew how to get it because i couldn't get the damn things to spawn without using a steel recruitment sandwich love the sandwiches by the way so i couldn't get it without a sandwich i went around fighting bisharps and the whole process was a mess this one i think it makes the most sense thematically like out of all the evolutions i've described the process is crystal clear that makes such perfect sense your bisharp is a leader among leaders it defeats other leaders and it becomes the leader of the leaders through natural selection, I suppose. And it turns into the king and he looks like a shogun sitting at a war table strategizing. Unfortunate movement, but that's what he looks like. That is awesome. If the area that had the Bisharp spawning in it alleged to this in even the tiniest way, I would be so much happier about this one. But I'm not because I had to go look that up after guessing and leveling a bishop up up really high and you know i know i should just go use the guide i know i should just use the guide but cut me some slack here i was trying to play the games without using a guide and i had this gaping hole in my pokedex that i suppose somebody could have just traded to me without telling me but i wanted to know and eventually i learned and i was upset about it so don't add me they just need a hint they just they just they just need they just need a npc wearing like a Bisharp outfit or something, saying like legend says that the, the, that the, the, while well, the Bisharp are leaders of the Ponyards, there are Bisharp that lead other Bisharp. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, why are you telling me this? Why are you telling me this guy? Why are you mentioning this? I have conflicting feelings about this one. So much sense thematically. Pokemon are awesome. Albeit King Gambit sitting problem. The process is abysmal really abysmal so inaccessible so um, i'm gonna have to give this one a d and maybe a little bit disappointing but it gets a d for i mean it's getting points back for being cool and thematic but come on come on even if a process makes sense in the confines of a game i need to be able to figure it out let's be reasonable here you get a d king gambit good enough and then we have Palafin, the little dolphin Pokemon. So this one, like I said, has an NPC. Then it's not a super informative one, but it does suggest 
that you get into a co-op lobby and hang out with Palafin. There's a guy talking with a girl saying maybe if they got together and hung out, uh, Palafin would bring out its uh, true strengths. The little dolphin. I think. I, I believe I'm calling it the wrong name, the little dolphin. And the way that you evolve this dolphin is you level it up to 38 while you were in a union circle. I think it's a tiny bit of a thematic stretch, but it's like a all might type friendship is magic. I fight for my friends Pokemon, where if the uh, dolphin's friends are in trouble, it activates its true strength because it loves its friends. So a little bit cheesy. I like the connotation. I, I am a sucker for that kind of thing. So I like it. It's really all fun. It's, I guess the teensiest bit convoluted, but honestly this one gets an a it stinks a little bit that the evolutions you only really get to see after you activate its ability in a battle but i think this is probably one of the best all around because there is a semblance of an in-game tutorial there is thought going on with the pokemon and both the pokemon are cool hey you get an a dolphin we've been waiting for you to come to pokemon for a long time you get it Hey, good job. And then the last Pokemon that we're going to cover today, one that I have a bit of a personal grudge with, is the Meltan and Melmetal. I think this one is just infuriating, let alone, like, the actual, like, simplicity of it. Meltan and Melmetal evolve. Meltan evolves to Melmetal only in Pokemon Go if you give it 400 candy. Then you transfer it out of Pokemon Go and then can use it in other games. Why? Why do I have to play Pokemon Go? Why? I'm playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. Why do I have to play Pokemon Go? For also hours on, on top of that. It is easy to get Meltan. If you have Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, let me be clear. It is easy to get it if you have those games because there was a tie-in for it and that was when Melmetal was released and they had this whole thing going on with Pokemon Go for some reason because they were trying to get the casual players or whatever, but I had to go into Pokemon Go off of my actual Pokemon game. Pokemon Go is a spinoff game. It is, it is, it is, it is real Pokemon, but it is a spinoff game. Go into my Pokemon Go game and get 400 candy. And let me tell you, when you catch a Meltan, you get three candy. You get three. You needed 400. You got three. Ridiculous. Literally ridiculous. It, it, it can't evolve. It can't evolve in the games. You can have Meltan in the games. You can have Melmetal in the game. You have to send Meltan to Pokemon Go, initiate the candy process, evolve it, and it back. I don't want to play a different game to have my virtual pet be as strong as it can be, because Meltan is another one of those ones where it is just poo poo by itself, and then Melmetal is a freaking golden god who has an exclusive move, does a ton of damage, and has been extremely dominant in several competitive formats. I should not have to play Pokemon Go to do that. I like Melmetal a lot. But this evolution method gets an F for having to play two games, one of which I did not want to play. So there you go. There's all the wackiest, wildest, weirdest Pokemon evolutions updated to Scarlet and Violet. Hope you learned something. I sure didn't the first time I was trying to get these done. But I know something now, and that's the important part. Let me know if you think I missed something or I don't know, disagree with me in some way. I'm a pretty I'm a pretty loaded loaded potato when it when it comes to the takes i can get in a high horse about difficult stuff like this i'm not very bright okay uh just just consider that when you're railing back against me in the in the comments and um so that's all i got for you hope you're enjoying scarlet and violet like i am and we'll see you next time